big boss that's special It ain't no game, but they say I'm welcome to the second level I can confidently state at the beginning of this review that you've never seen anything quite like Nusoft's Ace of Seafood before. It's not that the genre is unique, far from it in fact. It's essentially a repackaged mech combat bullet hell game, just, you know, with fish. The story is really where this game gets taken to another level. I will now read to you the honest to god blurb for this game. In the seas of the distant future, Humans have all but disappeared. In your current, newly awakened state, you are no more than a piece of seafood. But you have also been blessed with talent in leading your allies in battle. Do whatever it takes to become the Ace of Seafood. So yeah. You get to choose a fish or a crustacean to start with. Will you be the small but mighty sardine? The gallant salmon? Well, I opted for the tank-like lobster. And just like that, I was on my way. The tutorial is short and sweet, which is mercifully all it needs to be. Essentially, you need to know the limited navigational options at your disposal, your four main types of attack or defense, and how to use them. Of course, how to control your army of fellow sea dwellers as well, which you will be using to take down the entire fucking ocean in the name of, well, seafood, I guess? It still kind of cracks me up that they use the term seafood instead of Ace of the Sea or Ace of the Ocean. Either it was a deliberate attempt at humour or something was lost in translation. Either way, it's funny. I mean, we are talking about a game where you lead a fish army to claim what's left of future Earth back for seafood kind by killing all the other seafood. So how does it play exactly? Surprisingly good, actually. Navigationally, it's a hot fucking mess at times. The camera can be all over the damn place, it will glitch through walls occasionally. The fact I was controlling a lobster didn't help. I couldn't glide gracefully through the ocean with my pack of army fish. I had to sort of waggle myself from place to place when there was a lot of open sea. I could climb out onto land and shoot the fish from there though, so that came in handy a few times. Aside from dodgy navigation and camera wobbles, what's left is a decently playable shooter. You make your way from reef to reef, and as you approach one you get a message telling you who the defenders of said reef are. They then proceed to instantly attack you and your party of sea dwellers in the name of whatever fridge or oil container it is that they're living in. This is where the guts of the game come out. Utilizing your various defense and attack options, utilizing your crew in the same manner, it's all quite smooth and easy to get the hang of. The real beauty is the breeding system though, because not only are you a killer sea creature hell-bent on world destruction, you're also, apparently, a world-class genetic scientist. After killing various smaller, weaker life forms, you gain things like food and energy, but the bigger guys, you get their DNA. That's right, you can play god and actually create a creature to join your army. Now the ocean doesn't fuck about, you might find yourself on the tail end of a gigantic ass creature relatively quickly, at which point you will realise how weak you truly are. It's this that keeps the addiction going though, trying to take down something bigger than you, but not too big, and then breeding it, and then making it a part of your army, then using it to take down something a little bit bigger. This is the hook of the game, and it's immensely satisfying. I know, having seen further gameplay than I was able to get, that even behemoths like giant squid show up eventually, and as an avid fan of all things dark and scary in the ocean, this just gripped me even tighter. 
Do I think it was $12 well spent? That's debatable. I definitely could see it as more of a chill game, like a time killer. It's actually perfect for the Switch, which allegedly it should be making its way too soon. However, the version I played for was PS4. It was decent, but nothing incredible. Playing it as an on-the-go, quick-session game seems like it would be more appealing. The addictive nature of the game is there, but you also don't really feel like you're missing anything huge if you don't play it for a while. So if I had any kind of say in the matter, I would suggest that if you have a Switch, you perhaps wait for that release. Unless you really, really want to play a game about future fish trying to do a gang takeover of the entire oceans using lasers. In which case, go ahead and pick it up. Second level.